By the end of this series, you will be super acquainted with your featherweight and you will know it inside and out. This is the first video in the Singer Featherweight Restoration Series. Welcome. I'm going to take you through the entire process of how I restore a Singer Featherweight. There's a lot of things that you're going to learn and if you're following along, make sure you look at the description box below before you leave because there's a list of tools and supplies, some that I just recommend and others that you really will need through the process. I hope you'll leave me some comments as we go. Let me know what you think or if you have questions. And now there's nothing left to say. Let's just get started. This featherweight was manufactured in 1949 and it is in the condition that I got it in. And it has several issues. First thing I do when I set a featherweight on my table to restore is if there's a needle, I take it out. That involves taking the needle clamp thumb screw right here and just turning it towards you to loosen the needle and remove it. If the machine came with the needle in it, I pitch it. I don't know where this needle has been. I don't want it. The next thing that I will do once I remove the needle, and I should explain further, I'm not just removing this needle because I'm worried it's bent or something. I don't know how this machine works and I don't want to risk turning the hand wheel and having the needle go down and maybe hit something down in the hook area since I don't know how this machine functions yet. What I'll do next is I will take the hand wheel and just by hand, this is before I've even plugged it in, turn it towards me. I'm just seeing, does everything move? Is it frozen? Nope, everything works. This machine turns fairly easy, so I got lucky there. I don't hear any weird noises. I don't hear anything hitting within the feed dogs up on the needle plate or anything like that. So now that I know that, I feel comfortable plugging the machine in and listening to how it runs. So when you plug in your featherweight, you will see here on the end, this motor is loose, here on the end is where the plug goes. The plug that you're plugging in looks like this. So you can see how they match up. There's sort of a curve to this, almost like a smiley face, and that's how it's going to plug in here. Before you plug this in, look it over everywhere. Make sure that you do not have any cuts in your cord, nothing's frayed or coming apart both on this end and the end that you're going to plug into power. If for any reason you see damage there, don't plug it in, just wait. You can order a new cord like this if you need to. Don't use one that is damaged. So to plug it in, it just pushes in just like that. Now what I can do is turn this back around and I can test the light out. That's a good way to see if the wiring is working as far as the light goes. And since it had a bulb in it already, I can turn it off and on. And I'm also going to jiggle the wires a little bit just to make sure there's nothing wrong with the connections and it's not flickering off and on. To test out the motor, I'm going to use my foot controller. I want to know if it works too. What I will do first is on the hand wheel, I'm going to disengage the motion of the needle bar and all of that. It's the same thing I would do if I were winding a bobbin. So turn this so you can see. Here's my hand wheel. And this is called a stop motion knob. And if you grip your hand wheel and just turn the knob, you'll see it should turn just a little bit counterclockwise. So if I turn it just a little bit counterclockwise, it should stop the needle bar and everything from moving. And I'll just see the hand wheel turn, which is how we would wind the bobbin. And I can find out if the motor works, if it's sluggish or anything like that. Now I'm gonna turn off my light because this is already getting hot. So there'll be a new LED light bulb for sure. Now that I have the stop motion feature engaged, I can press the button on my foot controller and see if I'm going to get any movement from the motor at all. And see, now 
The hand wheel's still turning because I would need that to wind a bobbin, but the needle bar is not moving. And I like to see just how fast I can get it to go. It's actually not so bad. There's a little bit of weird squeaking going on, but this motor is actually not mounted firmly, so we'll be fixing that. So I'm comfortable. The foot controller works and the motor works. Now I will take that little knob on the end and turn it back all the way clockwise. And I'll press this button again on the foot control and see what happens here. And it runs. So I'm satisfied with that. Now I will unplug the power because I don't need it anymore for quite a while. And it's never a good idea to work on these machines while they're plugged into power, only if you're sewing with them. Otherwise you risk injuring yourself, injuring the machine, just don't do it. So what would I do next? Well, I know I'm gonna be manhandling this machine a lot. So the first thing that I'm going to do is remove this bed extension, because what do we wanna do? We wanna grab the machine, right? And we wanna grab here, and all we do is mess with how well this bed extension is gonna work for us. There are a few little washers in here that we don't want to damage in any way. So let's just go ahead and take it off. There are two screws that you want to take out when you remove the bed extension. One is here and the other one is exactly on the other side, just like it. So you will need a heavier duty screwdriver to get to this screw and they can be stuck. If on the first try, you cannot get the screw out do not keep forcing it. Instead, spray it with a product like this, a penetrating oil. There are many brands out there. I just happen to love this one. Let it soak for a little bit and come back. And if it's just one side that's stuck, you can even spray it, turn it on its back so the oil has gravity working with it to work it down into the threads. But most importantly, you want to make sure that your screwdriver fits. That's why it's important to have more than one screwdriver. And I like ones that have interchangeable bits so I can take my bits, find a good fit, and then that's nice and snug in there. Then I know I'm not taking an even higher chance of damaging the screw head. Let's turn this just a little. So I've got the bit that fits. Put it in my, this is a Chapman. These come out by turning them counterclockwise. And you see I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing up high on the neck of the machine to hold it still. And then you just take the screw out. Now when you're doing this, do it on a towel or something like that so your parts don't fall and bounce off of a hard table and onto the floor. Let's look at what we have here. This is a hinge screw, and both of the screws that hold the bed on are the same. They're both hinge screws, they're the same size, so you don't have to worry about which was in the front and which was in the back. But this is what I mean when I say hinge screw. This right here works as a hinge. It's what the metal part of the bed rotates on so you can move it up and down. This is what screws into the body, this threaded part here. And these two washers, which hopefully you found, are actually what help hold the bed up while you're working in the hook area and keep it from flopping down. You should have noticed one washer has sort of like a curved shape to it. Do you see that? Kind of like a contact lens sitting on my finger. One should look like that, and one should just be a flat, simple washer. Nothing special about it other than it fits onto this hinge screw perfectly. So we're gonna set these aside. Just so you know, these can get damaged and worn out over time. You can find replacements for them, so don't panic. But hopefully you found both washers. If you don't think you did, double check inside this hole right here. Sometimes this flat one will get stuck in there and you just have to kind of fish it out. So I'm gonna set this aside and take the other one out.
So here's the second one on the back side of the bed. Now, before I pull this out all the way, I'm just going to kind of hold on to my bed extension because it's going to fall when I get this screw out. And then lay down the screw. And now the bed extension should just pull off and I can set it aside. And I just want to double check again. I have one hinge screw from this side, one of these special little washers that are curved and one flat washer. Now, what I recommend is taking these parts as you take them off and bagging them in a plastic bag or in a bowl where they don't get mixed with any of the other parts on the machine. If you don't separate out your parts as you take them off and you have never done this before, you are going to be confused as to which screw goes where. They might look very similar, but almost all of them are different in size. If it's your first time, get a little sandwich bag, plop your parts in, Make sure I got all of them. And if you want, you could even put a little sticky note or something inside the bag that says bed extension hinge screws and washers. Then even while you're cleaning them or putting them back on, now you're going to know where these went on the machine. I highly recommend doing that. So I took the bed extension off. Now I'm not going to grab it anymore. What am I going to do next? I'm going to just kind of look this machine over and I will start here in the nose. So I'm happy to see that this machine has its original bobbin case with it. If you have the original bobbin case, that's great. Keep it. Don't lose it. And you'll know it's an original because you'll be able to see the part number stamped on it. This is 45750. And we will clean this up at some point. We'll make sure that it's functioning properly. If anything is going to be wrong, it tends to be with this little lever right here. But you can set this aside or in a bag. Don't lose it. And we're going now to look inside the nose of the machine. There's a little thumb screw right here on the end. And all you have to do is twist it counterclockwise. And this plate just kind of slides to the right a little bit. So it comes off of the thread take up here. And that's all there is to it. So these two things I will actually bag up together until I get them clean and ready to put back on the machine. So what do we have in here? Here is where we see the needle bar, the presser bar, and the thread take up system. We can also see more of our presser foot lifter as well as this tension pin releasing lever, which is how our tension works how we engage it and disengage it. See how this little thing's moving here? That's because of this, and we'll get into this. And we're gonna take all this out and clean it, including the thread take up. But just so you see how this works, if I'm turning the hand wheel, the needle bar goes up and down, the thread take up is moving up and down perfectly timed, at least when we're done. And then you can also see how this bar raises and lowers the presser foot. So we're not gonna take anything else off from here today. What we're going to do is look down underneath the machine. So if you turn your machine on its back, you will see that there should be a bottom cover and another little thumb screw. And I just want to warn you, when you remove this bottom cover for the first time, be prepared to be grossed out because I have found everything from just nasty grease and oil to dead bugs in here. So just, you know, take a breath. But this thumb screw turns counterclockwise to the left. And then you may have a little felt pad right here. It's sort of like a little spool pin felt. 
if that's there, keep it because really there should be one. When this metal contacts this metal and you run the machine, the felt pad was there to keep vibration down. So you don't want extra noise when you're running your machine. So you can set aside your thumb screw and then just very gently pull off this cover. Ah, this actually isn't that bad. <laughs> there are no bugs. But this, if you'll notice, yours might be loose. I think mine is. This is a drip pad. It's original to the machine. And it was installed to catch all the extra drips of oil and grease that would run down when you service your machine. So this machine is over 70 years old now, and this has probably never been replaced. If you notice a nasty smell in your machine, this is one place that it could be coming from. So whenever you're ready to get rid of the smell, just take this off, and it might not come off as easy as this one did. You may have to pull at it a little bit. Take this off and throw it away. We can buy replacements for this, not hard to find, and so worth it when it comes to getting rid of funny smells in our machine. So I'm gonna set the bottom cover aside. It's not going back on for a while, and I'm not gonna lose this little thumb nut. Now all I want to look at, I'm checking out the wiring that I can see so far here. This is the wiring for the motor and the light. Do you see this right here? Even though it looks white or yellow or whatever, actually this should be like a silver or pewter color. And the reason why is because it's actually wiring sort of like this wrapped in a lead sheath. And the idea was that this wiring goes up to the light, but it's running right past some gears and some other moving parts. So putting this lead sheath on it kept the wire from going in the wrong direction. It's bendable and it stays in place. The problem is, is that lead oxidizes over the years. So now what I have to deal with and what you may have to deal with is taking this out while trying to keep all this oxidized lead off of us and out of our gears. And thankfully there are ways to do that and thankfully also, if we do get some on the gears, we're gonna be cleaning them, so it's okay. But we will try to be gentle just to keep as much of it out of the machine as possible. If I turn my hand wheel now, I can see the gear spinning here, which is turning this hook shaft, which is then rotating my hook, which you'll see right here in this hole. This is a counterbalance for your hook. And I'm just checking to see everything's running smoothly here. We see these rock shafts here. They're what move the feed dogs up and down, back and forth. So we will be taking out the motor, the wiring, the light, and we will be cleaning all of these areas as well. I may be doing a deep dive on how to remove the rock shafts I like to do that because it's easier to clean around the gears, but I don't know if I will actually do that part for you guys or not. If you're doing this for the first time, it can be a little bit tricky, especially when you put everything back in so your settings are proper. So the other thing we will remove at some point are the feet, and now is as good of time as any. So these little rubber feet here on your machine are just screwed in with flathead screws. And these are something that I only keep if they are in like amazing condition. Typically they come off and I replace them with new bed cushions. So if you were looking for them, if you type in featherweight feet, you're going to probably see attachments for your sewing machine. But if you type in featherweight bed cushions, you will find these. See how that was kind of stuck in there? A lot of times they can be crumbly, one can be missing or broken in half. So I like to take them off, 
clean up these screws because they actually are the first thing to get rusty on the machine. And then replace the bed cushions. And I do that at the very end. So I'm gonna remove the other top two really quick. So I've removed all four bed cushions and here are my screws. And they are pretty easy to recognize, but I'll still bag them up mostly so they don't roll away and get lost and that's it and you see these are stuck kind of have to pick them out sometimes you need a screwdriver to pry them loose but if i can't do it that way see if i can wedge it out this way there it comes okay so i'm tossing these if yours were in excellent shape I'd still probably take them off and at least take care of those screw heads, make sure they're not rusty, and put them back on when we're just about done with the restoration. So we took off the bottom cover, we've removed the nose cover, we've tested out the motor, we've taken our bobbin case and set it aside, we removed the bed extension. Check out in the description box below for this video if you're curious about what kind of supplies you might need. I'm going to try to list everything there and then introduce it as we use it. But if you want to work with me and be prepared, then check out that list now and you'll know what you need. So I think our next job will be removing some of the parts here in the nose, like the hook, the needle plate and the feed dogs, the needle bar, the presser bar, and the tension. We won't remove the hand wheel or the motor just yet. The hand wheel is nice to have on because it allows us to turn the needle bar, which is really great whenever we're taking it out. So that's what we can expect to do next. Thanks for watching. Bye.